461 of Good Luck High Five. That's right. You're listening to a show that's for you if you play Magic the Gathering. Whether you are going to play it all through Thanksgiving while avoiding your family, or you're going to play it on either side of Thanksgiving, we are here for you. I'm one of your hosts, Maria. I'm another one of your hosts, Megan. And on today's show, uh, we're going to be talking about Crimson Vow Limited. Yeah, so there's been some, some more evolution yes. of Crimson Vow Limited. There's been some evolution of my personal success. Great. Thank goodness. Good Otherwise, to hear. Yeah, that would be very bad news for me seeing as I started off quite miserably. Oh, I'm still doing bad. I need today's episode to kick my butt into gear. Do you know what? It worked for Midnight Hunt. Yes, it sure it sure did. Yeah. yeah. Following the, turns out following the data, following the science is something good to do. Well, who knew? You heard it here first, first for the first time For the ever. first time on this show. On but this show. Before that, we are going to have our Scryfall random card. Yes. And after that, we'll have a little bit of magic story time. Yeah, I'm excited to know what's happening with this wedding. Yeah. Yeah, we know it's occurring. We learned that in the last story time. But it we'll, happening. It happening now. Yes. I'm going to wear my fanciest hat. Guess what? You're going to get to hear a lot about everyone's favorite mopey boy. Ooh, Soren. Soren. Oh, boy. <laughs> Soren's moping? He's always moping. Question. If he's not more... If he's not moping, is he Soren? You know? <laughs> no, I would say no, no. That sentence, it seems like it was that, really weird. It did not make the a words, lot of sense. The words, because yeah. he could be, you know, he could be sore, mope. So anyway. Yeah, like soaring, like flying Yeah, high. thank you. Yeah. So if he's not moping... <laughs> Look, this is why you listen to this show. Banter like that. A plus banter (laughs) like that. Thank you to everybody who supports us, by the way, over on patreon.com slash GLHF magic. We are so excited to have all of our new patrons join us for a special movie coming up on December 18th. Yeah. So December 18th at 11 a.m. Central, which I... Uh, Maria, I very recently had a very, very bad time zone mess up. Oh, did you really? <laughs> yes. Time zone. I was are off by three hours. So annoying. Just really something. Anyways, 11 a.m. Central on December 18th, we are going to watch Die Hard Yay! with all of you. Um, we adore Die Hard. And by all of you, we mean anyone who starting today yep. becomes a patron or ups their pledge. Absolutely. You will have exclusive access to fun movie hangout times on the 18th. Yeah, on the 18th. So we've got we got the promotion running. You'll see it the second you log into Patreon uh, from now until December 15th because we're going to need a couple of days to coordinate with all of you. Yeah. Uh, but all you need to do is become a patron between now and then or increase your pledge by any dollar amount. It could just be a buck or it could be like 50 cents or whatever. As long as you increase your pledge, mm-hmm. you're eligible to come watch Die Hard, everybody's favorite Christmas movie. It'll be with a us. great time. It's going to be so fun, everybody. We're going to hang out. I love Die Hard. We're gonna so ch- we're gonna chat about it while we yeah. watch the movie. Um, and yeah, we're <laughs> yeah. Maria and I will be on video we'll chatting on about chat. it, and then we'll have a channel where you can text chat with each other about yeah. it. It'll be a great time. All you need to be able to is access Die Hard because we're all going to pl- press play at the same time. It is on yeah. Amazon Prime. You can own it on DVD, whatever. Um, but yeah, that's how we're going to watch it. All right. I'm very excited. I'm so, so excited. Please join consider us. Consider becoming a patron. Yes. Thank you as well to Card Kingdom for being super awesome. Other sponsor of the show. You can mm-hmm. check them out at cardkingdom.com slash GLHF. Use our affiliate link for anything you want to buy from them. And we are in buying and giving season, Megan. We so are. And what better place to do it than cardkingdom.com slash GLHF. What what just like lovely people. They are, you know, each person there is like your own personal Santa. Yeah, that's right. They're just jolly and merry and just making everybody <laughs> have fun. I recently had somebody message me and say, what should I get for my kid who is just getting into magic? Oh, man. And I was like, well, Card Kingdom has tons of options for yes. you. You could pick up some cool battle decks. You could pick up their cool like starter commander decks. Yep, absolutely. Tons of fun ways to play. And get people into the game if what you're trying to give them is just the gift of knowing, finding out that they like magic. (laughs) Or if they already know they like magic and you're just getting them something for that. Check them out at cardkingdom.com slash GLHF. Before anything else. 
It's randomizer it's time. It's randomizer baby. time. So this is uh, scryfault.com, and we're hitting the random card button. I'm going to do it first. I'm going to look up a card for Maria to guess. Oh, boy. I'm so excited. We've gotten some real weird cards. <laughs> we truly have. I cannot wait for you to see the art of this one. Oh I'm going to tell Maria the name. I'm going to show her the card art, and she's going to guess a cost and what it does. Okay. Um, all right. So... <laughs> <laughs> I just want you to look at this. Oh my God. <laughs> what is so that? Red, tell us what you're seeing. This is a picture of a d- demon um, yeah. with giant black wings, weird like tendril hair. Yeah. You can see their <laughs> what rib cage. Yeah. Uh, and they're surrounded they're very spooky. by a white um, glowing tether that seems to be binding them. Yeah. I Yeah. I think you really got it. Is binding um, in the title. T- no. Dang it. Uh, the name of this card is Spiritualize. <laughs> <laughs> wow, a one word name. Okay. Spiritualize. Spiritualize is a one word name, which doesn't happen often in magic because they want to save it for really good cards. Yeah. This art makes me think it's older. Okay, Spiritualize. This this card is white because the, okay. wh- the white tendrils are doing something to this demon. Okay. Uh, they are turning any black creature into a 1 1 flying spirit. Wow. Sorcery. Nice. Costs uh, three white. Um, do you know what? You are correct. It is a white card. Okay. Um, two and a white oh. for an instant until end of turn. Whenever target creature deals damage, you gain that much life. Draw a card. <laughs> there you go. Oh, wow. Wow. Okay, so this is from Odyssey. Yeah. Wow. Okay. That, Very weird. That's so strange. You never see a card like this anymore. It basically gives any creature at all lifelink for you. Their creature give you lifelink. Yeah, exa- that's what I'm saying. You can target your creature, but you can also just target their creature. And then draw a card for yeah. three mana. All right. Hey, that's not a bad card. Honestly, the draw a card part really sells it for me. I know. I was going to say like, oh, does it just stop there? Right. In a contemporary set, you would play that in a life gain deck. Yeah, for sure. I don't know that I would play it in a non like life gain centric deck, but. Okay, Megan, I've got your card here. Ooh, this looks familiar. Okay. We're seeing what is obviously a druid or shaman creature type. Yep. Um, they have like a, a big skull on top of their head. Um, and it looks like, so their arm is extended and their top part is arm, but the bottom part is kind of becoming branches <laughs> instead. Yeah. And then there's like a, a weird green of like, um, demon, not demon, but like a weird green creature plant, yeah. like spiky green, angry creature plant. You have described this correctly. That is yeah. accurate. The name of this card is dream pod druid. So good job Ooh. on nailing the druid creature type. What does this card do? Um, this creature is, uh, this dream pod druid is, um, two and a green, mm-hmm. uh, for a two, three, um, and it has an ability that you can, um, <laughs> let's see, I'm going to say for, um, five and a green tap, uh, put, no, let's change it. <laughs> okay. Three and a green tap it. Yeah. Um, and you create, uh, a, an XX plant creature token where X is the number of plant creature tokens you control. I'm going to give you a very close point on this because this is one of green for a two, two at the beginning of each upkeep. If dream pod druid is enchanted, create a one, one green sapperling creature token. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So it's making creature tokens. Cr- yeah. And making, I said, what did I, I said plant plant, but sapperling is, is like plant. is plant. So why did wow. you say that? Was it something in the art? Cause it's that creature it's creating it's that, like, something yeah. from the art. He oh, looks like that's he's so like cool. making that, that weird, you know, mean yeah. snake yeah. tree. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Wow. Dream Great. Pod Druid. Uh, this printing is plain, is plain Chase Anthology. Um, yeah. When was it first made? It appeared in Vintage Masters and it also appeared in Plain Chase 2012. Okay. So, so it's a Plain Chase card. It's a card. Plain Chase card. Weird. So the only time we would have seen it was Vintage Masters if we played that. Yeah. Interesting. All right. There you go. Very cool. <laughs> Very random. Very random. <laughs> Hey, everybody, we're going to talk about draft now for Crimson Vow. Megan, how's it going? You said you're doing better. Okay. I 
had I've only I think I've only drafted twice since our last episode. Okay. One of the decks was quite bad. I don't even remember any of its qualities. You just need to delete it from your brain. It was just bad. Take out the trash, you know? Yes. Um, but since then, uh, my most recent draft deck was a rousing success, Maria. Great. Uh, you can take a look at it right here. Oh, all was, right. Do you know what? I have to admit, it is so hard for me to draft aggro decks. And you did it here. It is so hard for me, though. This is an alien sentence to me, but okay. It's so... I just... I don't know. I don't know what to do with them. I don't know what cards they want. I don't know how to pilot them. This is, by the way, this is a Boros red white deck here yes. for Megan, um, which has two copies of Kessig Flame Breather, which is the one three that pings when you play an instant. Yes. Or sorcery. Right? Yeah. Three copies of Lacerate Flesh. Non creature spell. <laughs> oh, and three copies of Lacerate Flesh. All right. That's right in there. The four damage. Yep. A couple of very nice rares, which I will call out because yeah. it's important in this format. You do need the rares. Uh, Stencia Uprising. Great. Which I got to my very last game, my seventh win, because <gasps> I went 7-1 with this deck. Great. My seventh win, I got to burn someone's face Yay! for seven. Our I got to sacrifice card it and get it done. That's awesome. But you know what? That card is so great. There were times when I would hit 13 permanents just, like, and I would just no. be like, no, I don't want to sacrifice it. I want more humans. Um, and with like so many little tokens and I had a bunch of blood tokens, it was pretty easy for me to manipulate oh, sure. the number of permanents that I had. Oh, that's so cool. Which was very fun. Wow. That's, I really want to play with Sensei yeah. Uprising. Uh, it also goes very well with by invitation only. Oh my God. Which is the choose a number between <laughs> zero and 13 and each player sacrifices that many. Yeah. Guess what? You just have a bunch of dumb one ones to sacrifice. <laughs> You're just like, oh, uh, that's great. I'll pick two. I'll sacrifice these two one one tokens, and you can sacrifice two real things. Good, good, good combo. So yeah, and then Dollhouse of Horrors, which is quite good. Oh wow, this deck looks sweet. This it was, is excellent. Yeah. Um, it was, you know, it was just quite good. And the rest of it, honestly, is just kind of like whatever. Yeah, I mean, you've got Militia Rallier, the three three that's for three. True. That's a good aggressive card in this yes. format like you mentioned you've got the removal you've got the benefits from being able to cast on creature spells yep two belligerent guests daybreak combatants so you're just smashing people in the face like i said so much removal yeah the three lacerate flesh the wrath uh also a fierce retribution and a cigar imprisonment okay sure yeah and yeah, a yeah, circle yeah. of confinement Ooh, you got a lot of removal okay. just a lot of removal and last week we did talk about on the show you want removal yes removal and you bombs want a bad those are the two things you want in the set so <laughs> So it was just, yeah, you know what? This deck was very good. Seems super fun. It was, uh, yeah, it was a good time to play. It helped, you know what? I didn't always know what to do with myself uh, because none of my, all of my creatures are four mana or less. And I was like, <laughs> this can't be right. You know what's so funny? But you know what it was? <laughs> this is, okay, so we're going to talk about standard next week on the show ahead of the Innistrad Championship. But I was playing in the um, standard metagame challenge. Yeah. And I was like, okay. I'm going to go outside my comfort zone because I could have easily played White Weenie because that deck's good yeah. right now. Or uh, Black White Clerics. That's a fun, aggressive deck. Yeah. But I chose to play Black White Control, Ooh. Uh, a deck by Zdrugger Kowalski, which just seemed kind of fun and very rude. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I cannot tell you how terrible I felt playing this deck. Well, now, it sounds bad. <laughs> does this deck, is this deck good? I don't think so. No. But it was a cool deck and I wanted to be good with it. And I just like... I just am not a control you player. What? I don't know what to kill. I don't know when to be patient. I just <laughs> cannot yeah. do it. It's a hard when you if you uh, want to be able to work outside your comfort zone, you have to work it. It is. It felt so alien to me, just like yeah. how you're describing. I will say, okay, this was this was how I felt like I was in the right spot with this aggro deck. Yeah. Is I did have I got a late copy of Cemetery Gatekeeper, sure. which is a red mythic. Yep. Uh, it is a 2-1 first striker for one in a red. When it enters the battlefield, you exile a card from a graveyard. Whenever any player casts a spell or plays a land that shares a card type with the exiled card, it deals two damage to them. Sick. And do you know what? I was just I would just play it and be like, creature. I'm going to try. Yeah, I would take a creature and just be like, there were people who lost because they needed to play more creatures to block me. <laughs> but also every time they played a creature, it did two to their and face. And also you've got Stencia Uprising. So you're like, I don't even have to play creatures I if I don't to. want to. I can just play this to. thing and just like sit here and it generates a 1-1. One -one. <laughs> wow, you've really done it with this Do you deck. you know what? It was, it was nice. This is great. This deck was great. So that's my success story. Okay, fabulous. Let's talk about what could 
also be a success story for you. Okay, so uh, we talked last week about how green red had the best win rate. Yes. It has now been surpassed by black red. Wow. Which, uh, so that's come up only by a little bit. So black red's win rate is 57.4%. Nice. Green red's is 56.5%. Okay. So they're still fairly close, but black red has whoop, gone over the top mm-hmm. of green red, which is kind of interesting. So those are the two best colors. That's definitely where you want to be, if at all possible, in this yeah. draft format, okay? Where you do not want to be, we said this on the show last week, is you do not want to be in Simic. Yes. It is really bad. Guess what I just drafted? Simic. Yes. I know. Do you know what? It's fine. We'll see what happens. I just drafted Look, it. I haven't you played can, any games. If you can draft a, a value pile, it can get there. Yeah. Like, we're not saying it will never work. We're just saying you don't have all of the stuff that <laughs> other cards have, like a braid. Okay. Yeah. Also, very high up there is Boros. Yep. Um, which, you know, like I said, I certainly felt the power of. Absolutely. You can just get a lot of removal, right? We're talking about oh, yeah. black, red, green, red, and red, white have so much so removal. So much removal. You have Wolf Strike. Yep. Uh, which is the green instant that deals Bite. yeah that deals damage. Um, there's the fierce retribution. There's lacerate flesh. There's flame blessed bolt. There's just a braid, a, yeah. Like there's Sigarda's imprisonment. There's one billion things. Grizzly ritual in black. Yep. Bleed dry in black. Yep. Blah blah blah. Blah. Gift blah, of fangs in blah, black. Blah blah yeah. blah. <laughs> all removal all the time. Oof. So if we can give you those pieces of advice, it's the, stick to the colors that's got, that have lots of removal and play mm-hmm. bombs. There you go. That's going to get you the longest, unfortunately, in Crimson Vow Draft, Yeah, where we are now. Slam the rares. But if you want to understand which commons are going to be good, I will say that the blue-white deck cares more about having commons um, than any of the other decks, or functions on commons is what I yeah. should say, better than the other decks. Uh, and so these are cards to help round out your deck or what you should take as signals, perhaps, that a color lane is open when you're drafting. Yes. So some of the best cards in white. Ooh, one of the fierce retribution. Oh, so Love good. Love it. One of my favorite cards. It's so flexible. Kill your yes. attacking creature or wait till six and kill anything. Exactly. And just that you can kill an attacker at two mana. Yeah. So if you haven't played a two drop, guess what? You can do it. You can do or it. Or if you're at six mana, you can play a four drop and keep two up. It's just so flexible. So flexible. Not a trick we get in white all that often, especially no. not with that flexibility attached to it. Uh, Sigarda's imprisonment. Removal? What? Right. More Another removal. Piece of removal? Do you know what? I also love this third card. Traveling Minister. Oh, yeah. This is one white for a little... Is it a one-two or a one-one? I want to say it's a one-two. I think it's a one-two. And you can... As a sorcery only, yeah. tap it to give another creature, or give any creature, you can give it to itself, yeah. uh, plus one, plus oh, and when you do, you gain, gain one a life. life. Yeah. Can you believe this card is so good? I love this card. This card is so good, everybody. It is extremely underrated and might be the most underrated card on our list. We're taking data from 17 lands, by the way. We're not just it's talking so out of our butts here. Car- uh, it's so card. <laughs> Card. This card is so card, it's card. It's so card. <laughs> I Let's love it. not forget that it is so card. This card is so card, which, you know what? It doesn't make any sense, but it kind of does. The most card there this is. This card is a card. Because lots of times we'll say this isn't worth a card. Yeah. This card is worth this card. This card is not card, but <laughs> this card is card. <laughs> <laughs> so why the heck is this stupid one two so good well i mean gaining life is quite good yeah and there is a black white life gain deck mm-hmm. with our friend courier bat being cute oh he's so cute getting your stuff back from the graveyard oh i found yes. you this body it's alive now <laughs> Thanks, Bat. Thanks, Bat. So creepy. Very also creepy. Cute. Great. Yeah, traveling minister. You wouldn't expect it, but there you go. Nice. Nice. In uh, blue. Yeah. Uh, do you know what? Okay. I love Lantern Bearer, and I also hate playing against Lantern Bearer mm-hmm. because you you have to kill it eventually. You got, yeah. It's flying, but then it's just gonna come back and make something else fly. Then you gotta and kill that's it again. Bad. Yeah, so blue topping blues list is in fact Lantern Oof. Bearer. That card is a house and very annoying, as you said. So good. 
And the other two cards in blue, uh, we've got a counter spell and we've got scattered thoughts, which is a draw spell. Yes. So scattered thoughts is three in a blue instant. Look at the top four cards of your library, put two of, two of those cards into your hand and the rest into your graveyard. That makes a lot of sense because I feel like blue is trying to get by on some card advantage. Yeah, for sure. They definitely you just need, need it. it. You need it because yeah. you do not have the hard removal of the other colors. No. And I mean, if you're looking for hard removal, I guess syncopate is as close as you're going to get in blue here. Which is the other card. Yeah, there you go. Syncopate. All right. <laughs> Almost tied here, I wanted to know, with chill of the grave. So I do like me a chill of the grave. Keep that in mind. But yeah. Burr. Burr. <laughs> I think I so did the cold. flavor text on chill of the grave. What is it? Um. Oh, man. Is it just burr? burr. Actually, you know what? I, it might be. Okay. <laughs> Let's look it up. Chill of the grave. I did. Frozen is frozen, whether it's with cold, terror, or both. Oh, that's a good flavor go. text. Ooh. All right. In black, unsurprisingly, there is bleed dry. Bleed dry. Oh, sometimes your opponent plays a third one, Oof. a third copy of bleed dry, and you're just like, really? Really? Okay. You had it. All right. Really? Sure, fine. Rude. All right. <laughs> In black, you also have Diagraph Scavenger and Blood Craze Socialite. Wow, dude, this is surprising to me because it's a two three for two and a black for three and a black, I mean, but it does have death touch, yep. which is quite important. And when it enters the battlefield, exile up to one target card from a graveyard. If a creature card was exiled this way, each opponent loses two life and you gain two life. So it is it it is like it's just a lot of value slapped into it. Yeah. Like it's like, okay, death touch. And you can exile something from a graveyard, which is nice in this set. For sure. And get that lantern little, bearer out of there. Uh, gain two, drain two. Okay. So, all right. Blood Craze Socialite is just a huge beater. Yeah. Um, I, I love this card. Um, it's very, very scary to be across the table from because they're like, I'm just going to be attacking you for five, I guess. Yeah. Forever. You, you really got to kill it. Yeah. It's, it's a pretty necessary kill. Um, yeah. Necessary kill. Necessary kill. Red has just got all the gifts here. Yes. <sighs> Flame bet blessed bolt, obviously. Deal two to any creature. Pew. A braid, deal three to any creature. And Falconrath Celebrants, which I also love. I love that card too. Um, this is four and a red for a four four menace, and you get two blood tokens. What? It's so much bonus. Can we just for a second talk about blood tokens? They're good. They're so they're so good, good. everybody. They're very good. They're very good. And very good. How much of a card is a blood token? You Speaking know of what? a card. <laughs> Speaking of how so card Speaking things of are, how card a card is. <laughs> yes, um, blood tokens are pretty card. They're pretty card. Yeah. Uh, is it like half a card? Yeah, they're probably a solid half a card. Maybe more than half a card. I don't know. They're three quarters card. Okay, so question: If a card says "ETB draw a card," like Elvish Visionary, great. <laughs> that's a card. That's card. That's card. Yes. And then <laughs> <laughs> pay one and sacrifice. Get card. Get card. On, Draw, discard on card. To discard card. Draw card. Draw card. That's, on card. In my opinion, that's three quarters card. <laughs> so it's better than than when it enters the battlefield, you discard and draw because you can save it for later. Yes, that is true. And blood tokens have so many other, other applications. Other applications. I would say blood token. Wow, three quarter card. Three quarter card. Yeah, um, I've heard some. I've seen some people tweeting about uh, cards too. Um, the little one one red creature that comes in for yeah. one red mana, calling that elvish visionary because it comes oh, yeah. along with a blood token. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I think that we're you're, that you're not wrong. Like yeah. getting blood tokens is so good, everybody, and the fact that Falconrath Celebrants has uh, menace. menace is also Oof. huge because it's like, yeah. what are you gonna block it with? <laughs> yep. All your things that die. Uh, in green, there is unsurprisingly Wolf, wolf Strike. strike. Um, the green blue deck that I just drafted, I first picked a Wolf Strike. I mean, why not? Yeah. The yeah. rare was bad, so. Yeah, for sure. Take the removal. Yep. Flourishing Hunter. Just gain you life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Hook Hand Mariner. Four, Love four, four, it. four, four. Why not? Yeah. Four, 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 four. That flip. That flip. He flip. He can be bigger. He has bat. Yes. Just kidding. <laughs> Maria, stop trying to make your prediction real. Stop trying to make bat happen. <laughs> There's also a list here that we have a best performing commons by their archetype. So this is helpful if you're like, oh, I'm getting into this archetype. What card should I have? Mm -hmm. This one is the most interesting to me of all. In the blue-white deck, the top performing common, Nurturing Presence. Wow. That Can is... 
very weird. But I will say I've been beaten by this card. Oh, have you? Yes, because if you can't get rid of it, it just like stacks. Yeah, so this is an enchantment for one and a white when you put it on your creature. Uh, whenever another creature ETBs, that creature gets plus one, plus one. And then when it, uh, till end of turn. And it also makes a spirit when it comes in. Yeah. So it's just good. Yeah. And right? It's like, it is surprising. I, it's so hard to like love it because it's an aura that you slap on something and you just feel like you're going to get two for one. Yeah. Well, I mean, at least, well, yeah. I'm you like, get a little if, spirit. It's, if it sticks, you get, you get yeah. your spirit. Um, but that being said, like I have had stuff where they had like a token generation. Sure. Like way of getting tokens in there. And so that, car, that creature just got big every turn. Oof. Which was rough. Yeah. So there you go. Blue, white. Wants white. Yeah. Nurturing Oops. presence. White, black was Diagraph Scavenger, which we just talked about. Yep. Makes sense. Yeah. Um, <laughs> White, red had evolving wilds, which is very strange, but it is. I don't know why <laughs> or what that means for that, but okay. I will just say that having an evolving wilds in your draft deck is a good idea. So yeah. like if you see one coming in late around the table, put, put it in because yeah. having your mana base play ball with you is something that you really do want. Um, white, green, none, none, Maria, you have a note on here. Training is just not the best. And so, I, and I ask you this, yes, how many, how many counters have you seen put on creatures because of training? Oh my gosh. That's a good question that have actually trained. <clears throat> I think the one I see it happen the most with is from the four mana. You get a boar and you get a one, one. Yeah. Um, so, you know. I've seen that happen. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. how many other times have I seen it? I don't know. Not very many. Exactly. There's I think, Maria, I think that I can say all, with almost complete certainty that I have seen counters a counter put on a creature with training five times. Yep. And it was with my green-white deck. It, was, it has only ever been me. Yeah. Yeah. And I have done it five times total. Wow. I mean... Just underwhelming. That's I can't think of anything more underwhelming than Men that. Mentor, it is not. I will say. No. I recall seeing a lot more mentoring happening yes. when mentor was a thing. But it's just not. It's just not. I think to draft white green is the same advice that I would say for drafting blue green, which is try not to do it unless it is extremely open and yep. you make cards that are just like, oh, I've got a bunch of four, 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 and some yeah. wolf strikes. Then you can maybe Great. get it done. Um, but yeah, yikes. Um, blue black is doomed to center. This makes a lot of sense because you want to exploit. Yep. And every time you exploit, you just get a little tutu, buddy. So. Exploit fun. Uh, blue red is Voldaren Epicure. Yeah, there we go. That's a little one one. Is it? I think so. Wow. I was trying to remember its name. Yeah, one one for one. It comes in, it pings them in the face, and you get a blood token. Yeah, you're right. What a what a thing. A yeah. one one for one. The be being the best okay. common in that color pair. Um, blue green. Grizzly Ritual. That's right. That means people are splashing for it <laughs> in blue green. I don't. I don't even have anything to say. A braid is number two. Yep. Okay. <laughs> that means that their, their decks are so bad that the best that performing card is the card a, they're splashing card. for. Okay. Cool. Moving on. Uh, That's embarrassing. <laughs> Megan's embarrassed for I'm you. I'm really embarrassed. Um, black red Falconrath Celebrants. Yep. Uh, black green witch's web plus three plus three. Ooh, I do like witch's untap, web and yeah. untap. Yeah, that that nice. card can get you. And reach. And I think so. I think so because it's giving you spider power. I yeah. don't remember. Uh, red green hook hand mariner. Yep, that's the four the four four buddy. Yeah, love the ballad of the hook hand and mariner. <laughs> you know, I just read that poem for the first time. Ballad of the hook hand and mariner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> spooky <Yeah. laughs> very 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 spooky um we've talked about on the set that rares are super super good yeah so we there's just a list here these are the best rares don't <laughs> don't pass them don't pass them back one pick one okay obviously tox roll the corrosive megan i was winning a game so hard I was winning this game so hard uh -oh. that there was nothing my opponent could do to come back. But was there something they could do to you know, come it, back? You know, it turned out <laughs> there was, in fact, something they could do to come back, and that was play Toxel the Corrosive. Oh, no. This card's stupid. That's pretty rough. Number one Toxel. Yeah. 
Um, Henrika Domnathy. Yeah. I had someone play this against me. A solid card. It was a bummer. They get to draw, they get to make you sack, and then they yeah. transform it into a flying life linker. Next up, Ava Brook Caretaker. Hexproof. Ouch. That's all we need this to say. This card is it's just stupid. This card is so dumb. It's so brutal. You guys, really I'm a Boggles is. player, and I just said this card is dumb. It's so dumb. If you want to hear how dumb it is, yeah. uh, <laughs> tomorrow on the channel, we'll have a brand new... Uh, what is this card? What is this card? Yeah. I know you so all you love can, this segment, so we're making a so whole So we're making a whole video, video of what is this card, Crimson Val Limited Edition. Dreadfast Demon. Yes. Yuck. Okay. Yep. That's just make more demons. Although I will say, Maria, in my red white draft, beat this card twice. Oh, sick. Nice. All right. Um, Cemetery Desecrator. Sure. Okay. Wedding announcement. This card's so good. Very good. I love this so card. So flexible. Do you want to draw or do you want to make creatures? And then you get an anthem. And then you get an anthem. Congratulations. It's nice. Um, Katilda Donhart Martyr. In a set with vampires. Protection from vamps. Seems good. Wow. And then if they manage to kill it, you just put it, it just back on something else. Put it on other things. Great. Okay, yep. Katilda. Very rough. Um, Anya, Maid of Dishonor. I've killed people from, I don't know, 10 just by Anya activations. Great. <laughs> Thanks, Anya. Great. You're real pal. Um, obviously, Soren, Soren the Mirthless. All right. Moping his way okay. onto this list. M Moping. <laughs> uh, Edgar, Charmed Groom. Can't kill it. It just is always there. You Maria. know what the funniest part is? Sometimes you have Edgar and you're like, yes, please kill it. Because I think I would rather have a couple I one-one lifelinkers. I think one I want lifelinkers. some vampires. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. And then he comes back and then he's like, oh, also these one ones are now two twos. I'm Edgar. <laughs> Blood I, I'm Edgar. <laughs> <laughs> Bloodville purveyor. Okay. Yeah. Another great rare. Don't pass it. Hullbreaker horror. I think it goes without saying. Yeah. I just want to, you know, let's just take a look at Hullbreaker horror. Do we real have quick. to? Oh, not if you don't want to. <laughs> Five blue blue for a seven eight flash. Can't be countered. Whenever you cast a spell, Choose up to one. Return target spell you don't control to its owner's hand. Return target non-land permanent to its owner's hand. Why? Uh, I'm almost going to go into what is this card right now. That's what I'm feeling. I'm feeling it boiling so under the surface. Yeah. I'm feeling it boiling under the surface. Hullbreaker horror. <laughs> Rough. Ugh. Um, Volatile arsonist. Yeah, that's a good card. Yeah. And Olivia's attendance. There have been times when people have played this card against me and it's... Olivia's Woof. attendance. All I can think of is uh, the start of Hamilton when the sisters come in. Uh huh. <laughs> it's work. Yeah. That's yeah. what I think when I see them. And they do work. Because <laughs> they do work. Uh, for red, red menace, whenever it deals damage, create that many blood tokens. Two in a red, it deals one damage to any target. It's a 6 6. It's a 6 6 menace. <laughs> <laughs> FYI. Ooh, what were, what were they has, doing with this set? That has an activation that can deal damage. <laughs> it just... Why not? Oh, why not? So there you go. Never pass those. If you no. do, I'm going to appear next to you and just go and slap your hand, okay? Yeah. Um, there are a couple of rares that are not as good. Yes. Um, Curse of Hospitality. Yeah, it turn, turns out it's just kind of yeah, slow. Just... Yeah, rough. I thought it would be better, honestly. But. Um, Sigarda's Summons. I don't even know what this card is. Oh this yeah, this card is, is fake. I picked this card. Doesn't exist. Um, I think when I in one of, in one of my first drafts, I picked it because I thought I might be able to do it. Mm -hmm. But it turns out you just can't do it. Yeah, no, this is. I mean, yeah, creatures you control with plus one plus one counters on them have base power and toughness four four have flying and are angels in addition to their other types. Yeah, this costs six mana. Yeah. Okay, if this costs like three or something, um, which would be, be more busted, it might e be playable. But like we like like we said, training is just really really difficult. Yeah, it's just not great. Uh, and by the time you get to six mana and cast this, and also have things plus one plus one counters, you're kind of entering the realm of magical Christmas land. And also, yeah. aren't you already winning? Yeah. If you have a bunch of <laughs> If you have a bunch of things, yeah, you're probably already winning. So you can pass that rare, okay? Yeah. And last, Kaya Geist Hunter. Um, <sighs> I, was, I love Kaya, so it's very disappointing. I know. Uh, to see her not have a great card here. One white black for a three loyalty planeswalker. Plus one. Creatures you control gain death touch until end of turn. Okay. Put a plus one, plus one counter on up to one target creature token you control. Token? I mean... All right. Stuff gets death touch. 
<laughs> okay. Okay. Surely the negative. Uh, minus two until end of turn. If one or more tokens would be created under your control, Wait. twice that many of those tokens are created no, instead. No, I just said a normal thing, not a token thing. No, it's a token thing. Uh, Sorry. Uh, token thing. Mm. Minus six, exile all cards from all graveyards, then create a 1-1 one, one white spirit creature token with flying for each card exiled this way. Hey, if Kaya didn't die by this time, there you go. That's true. So I will just say this about Kaya too. If you're in black, white, I mean like, Go for it. Yeah. Because she's going to be a lightning rod. Your opponent's going to be scared mm -hmm. of her and try and attack her. And if you manage to ultimate her, you'll get a pretty cool bonus. But the rest of it, like, I don't even know what... I don't even know. <laughs> I don't even doing? know. What are you doing? We don't have a lot of token makers in this set. I don't even know. I don't even know. If there was even, like, a timely reinforcement or whatever, you know, two mana make two one yeah. ones or something. I don't even know. I don't even know. What Kaya's doing. Okay, did the black-white deck that you were playing have this and then the one in a white version from the last set of Timely Reinforcements? <laughs> yeah. Because that would be... I'm into that. I'm, I'm here for that noise. That would be great. That would be great. Okay. Anyway, there you go, everybody. That's all the information that the World Wide Web has put together for your brains to digest. Yeah. For draft. Hopefully this helps you and me get a little bit better at my results. Fingers crossed. Fingies man. crossed. All right, Maria, are you ready for story time? I am. Okay, so a whole bunch of people, most notably Soren, Arlen, Chandra, and Adeline, um, have arrived outside the Voldaren estate. For the wedding? For the wedding. Oh. And they would like to go, but there's like a magical barrier by invitation only. Um, where if you try to go in without an invitation, it incinerates you. Oh, well, you know. There you go. <laughs> and the guards, Soren is like, I have an invitation. Don't I get a plus one? And the guards are like, no, <laughs> only you. And Soren's like, ugh. And he obviously also just doesn't want to go because he hates Olivia. Oh, also. Edgar is like related to him, right? Edgar is his grandfather. Yeah, so. Um, but Olivia has like essentially like captured him. Captured his sleeping vampire form. Wait, um, what? <laughs> okay. Oh, uh, yeah. Don't worry. We'll get into okay, it. Okay. Okay. So at the top of this, actually, we get to see some of the vampires just like milling around at the wedding. Great. And it turns out that in addition to drinking a lot of blood and drinking a lot of blood, they also are just kind of into randomly murdering each other whenever they feel like it because oh. they get in little tiffs and then they kill each other. Yikes. So there's a lot of vampires dying here, actually. <laughs> And then Olivia finally arrives. And also you get to hear a little bit about like there's the vampire, you know, who's just attending, who's talking about like being snotty about all the different vampire bloodlines. Oh, God. Anyways, <laughs> Olivia arrives and she uh, and also brings out um, Edgar's coffin. <laughs> Right, wheel because out the groove. <laughs> wheel out, it's basically like that. Wheel out the giant stone coffin, the giant marble coffin. Um, also, her dress is apparently made of like tormented souls of God, people that so she cool. ate. Uh, so, anyways, that's Olivia's very jam. couture. Okay, so Soren is like, fine, I'll go into this wedding. You all wait here. Um, and then, oh, you also hear that there's a bunch of people like Cathars and stuff like that lying in wait and hiding outside the fortress. Oh, OK. Um, once the planeswalkers and company can get it's inside. It's a real kind of Hamlet scenario here for Soren. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what? Soren <laughs> is the Hamlet of Magic the Gathering, <laughs> which is not a compliment. <laughs> not even a little bit. Uh, so... So he goes in and he's just like, I want to kill everybody and I don't want to be here. <laughs> oh, poor He's Soren. so mopey and he's so grumpy and everyone's just like, oh, is that Sorry? Oh, is that Sorry? He's moping. Oh he's moping. Yeah. And he's like not even talking to anybody. And he wore black and gray instead of black and red, which was Olivia's requested attire. Yikes. And everyone's just like, you're not. You're not dressed appropriately. Did you not read the invitation where it said what colors to wear? And he's like, no. Wow. Anyway, so he gets into like the main room and Olivia is like, I'm so happy you're here. And he's like, big eye roll. Yeah, for sure. And, so, and Olivia is like, well, it's time to wake up the groom. And so she like cuts her own arm open and pours her blood over Edgar's coffin. Um, and it like seeps into the coffin. And Soren is like, oh, he's going to like... You know, 
it's going to wake him up and he's going to have like when he drinks her blood, he'll have like some of her like memories and attitudes and passions. Right. Oh. He's like anytime he's woken his grandfather up, he like makes sure that he's very calm and centered so that he's not like giving him any like this any is emotion. Bizarre. <laughs> it's very bizarre. It is very bizarre. It's really weird. Right. Because it kind of I guess by like drinking Olivia's blood, it kind of puts Edgar in thrall to her or whatever. Sure. And so he wakes up and he's like, I'm so happy to be here. Um, and Soren is like, don't you remember me, granddad? And he has a weird, like loving his grandpa moment <laughs> where he's like, I'm sad that my grandpa isn't my grandpa. He's just Olivia's thrall now. I don't want that to happen. And wait, don't the other guests, aren't they like, hold up a second. This is not how weddings should be performed. Like it's clearly They're one person. They're all vampires. <laughs> they don't care. <laughs> Should not be they don't care in at all. all to the other one. You know no. what I mean? No, they're like, this is a normal and healthy relationship dynamic. <laughs> okay. um, and then Olivia's like, don't worry, you're not gonna oh Soren tries to tries to fight her, okay. but a whole bunch of guards hold him back. Um and uh, she wakes up his grandpa and then she is like, don't worry, I got a whole bunch of your other sleeping relatives. And she wakes up a bunch of his relatives and he's like, this is the worst wedding I've ever been to. <laughs> so all these very, all these old vampires are sleeping all the time? Is that the Yeah, deal? a bunch of them. Basically, they've mm-hmm. all been alive for so long that sometimes they're just so epically bored that they go to sleep in their mausoleums. I mean, like, you probably yeah, would. in the basement. Let's get real. And because they didn't have adequate protection, Olivia just went and fetched them all up and was like, come to my wedding. By force, I'm going to bring your coffin there and then wake you up. Oh, great. So that's what's happening. I wish I was invited. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> you have to watch out, though, because all the humans invited are just snacks. Yeah, for sure. So wow. there you go. That's what we know so far is that, you know, they're trying... Soren is like sad that his grandpa is enthralled to Olivia and they're going to get married and it's going to make Olivia Lord of Innistrad or whatever. But all of these humans are laying in wait around the castle yes. with some planeswalker buddies to yes. storm it down. Maybe yes. waiting for hopefully that barrier to somehow wow. then bring that barrier down so they can all go and fight. <sighs> I can't tell you, there you go. how much I just wish I could have seen the blood waking ceremony of Edgar. Yeah. Okay. Think of there's this enormous marble coffin inlaid with gold. Great. And Olivia, who's dressed in, again, the soul, tormented souls of people she's murdered. Olivia, who are you wearing? Well, this is Jake. <laughs> I have Amelia over here. Brandon. Um, and then she has, like, right, all these, like, like blood, you know. Yeah. There's, like, blood petals everywhere. <laughs> um, and and the, her, like, train is, like, held up by bats. Oh, cute. Okay. And so there's this enormous marble coffin, and it has all these intricate grooves in it. And she cuts open her own arm. And it goes and into all the of her very old, very, very, like, deep purple blood falls into it. Sick. Right? Pretty gross. <laughs> Pretty wild. <laughs> Worst wedding Soren has ever been to. Well, uh, what's going to happen? We'll find out next yeah. time on Magic Storytime. Yeah, there you go. Ooh. All right. <laughs> Spooky. <laughs> Nothing spookier than Soren being a grump. Thought you were going to say lifetime commitment. <laughs> no, do you know what? You're not wrong. Nothing spookier than a wedding, kids. I was like, I would have bet $100,000. That's what you were going to say. <laughs> say thank you to ultra pro for being another one of our incredible sponsors that's right so ultra pro has some sick stuff right now including one these gorgeous binders look at that I love this binder. Art. it's like great. i just oh it's amazing it's so cool it's just the black and purple on white uh it looks awesome i don't know man yeah i think it's really pretty it's very cool we also have these binders here that are from uh dnd which ultra pro yes. makes and these are a little bit of like a crossover mtg dnd binder yeah if you're into that because it has uh just like clear protector pages for your character sheets yep. if you need that and then it also has several pages of car like uh, card holders. Yes. So that you can put different spell cards in here from Forgotten Realms. And you're missing the best part, Megan, the sticker sheet. Yes, there's a whole sticker sheet. Stickers. Look at it. And these Ugh. are on front, they say the class. So I've got a cleric one here. I've got yeah. a ranger one. Megan's got bard. This one's bard. 
Yeah. Um, it's got great art. I just, they, I really like yeah, these. These are really nice. Uh, I would use these just as like, um, I miss binders with page protectors. Oh, in them. I know. Remember, like when you were in band Trapper and you put days. all your stuff in there. Anyways. Wait, what did you play in band? I played the oboe. Oh, Bo. Yeah, man. I really liked it. I am. I was a choir baby. Yeah. Choir baby. I played the violin for a hot five minutes before I was like, that's not happening. I played the oboe, and then I also, for a year, played the saxophone as well. Oh, because nice. Because they actually, in terms of, like, the different keys and stuff, have a fair amount of overlap. Oh, wow. So, there you go. So, if you're an oboe player who's a bard. Yes. You if your bard plays the one. oboe. If your bard plays the oboe or the saxophone, <laughs> this one's for you. <laughs> You know, you, can you just imagine a little bard traveling yes. around with their saxophone it case? It so cute. Yeah. <laughs> I got blisters on my hands from carrying my saxophone case home. <laughs> Anyways, there you go. Were you trying to say that's the nerdiest story. sentence that's ever been said? <laughs> what? <laughs> from carrying my saxophone? <laughs> oh, I thought you said ovo. I got blisters on my hand from carrying my ovo case home. <laughs> no, my saxophone okay, case. Okay, saxophone you. is cooler. Keep your... <laughs> Mind in your pants. Generally is. <laughs> That's the problem. Yeah. <laughs> everybody that's this episode of good luck high five thank you so much for hanging out with us again for another week yeah what a time we are so yeah. thankful for you on this thankful week yeah for uh being our listeners thank you all so very much um become a, become a patron or up your pledge because we would love to watch die hard with you yeah we'd love to share that experience with you this holiday season we really would um become a patron before the 15th or up your pledge and come hang out with us on the 18th at 11 a.m central time yeah. for a die hard christmas movie time oh, it'll be great it'll be so fun um Thank you to Card Kingdom and Ultra Pro. Mm -hmm. Great places to shop this holiday season for the magic player in your life. And if you're thinking about getting married to somebody and yes. they haven't necessarily said yes, but they're yeah. in a coffin and you're like, I could just wake them up and do this thing. Yeah. Just remember, use use your own blood and wear a soul of all a dress of all the souls you've tormented. <laughs> I was going to say, maybe rethink your life choices, but oh, if you no, think okay. them through and you still want to do it. you still want to do it. They, that's, that's just some, advice. Those are just some hot <laughs> tips for making your wedding the event that it can be. We're <laughs> 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 <laughs>